it's Mike from Party for Crafts back again with a test of the new Xtool P2 desktop laser. Today I'm going to be testing just how accurate the close-up camera really is. Uh, normally, these videos I've been making, I'm doing the first time I've ever tried to do something to show you how easy it is to use. But I tried this before and I made a few mistakes and I learned a few things. I'm going to share those with you before I get started today and I'll, I'll show you so you don't have to learn the hard way like I did. There's a fisheye camera like there is in any laser and it's not reliable as far as alignment goes, especially not in the corners. The Glowforge and the GYK both have that same issue. All lasers that have a fisheye lens have that problem. It's distorted. They try to use algorithms to fix it, but they're not perfect enough to like align an engraving on a pencil, which is what I'm going to do today. The Xtool P2 has a close-up camera that comes over and just above your engrave, it zooms in on a smaller area so you can get perfect alignment. We're going to test that today. There are people who online have engraved on toothpicks and on grains of rice, but I'm going to do something thicker. If you try to engrave on a toothpick and your focus is off, like it focuses on the platform beneath, it's only off by a millimeter and you're still going to be fine. So I'm doing a pencil where if it doesn't get the focus just right, the engrave will be way off and we'll see how that goes. All right, come watch me here. So one of the first things that I learned is that the distance item there on the screen, on the Glowforge, you put the thickness of the material and it calculates the distance. On the GYK, you measure the thickness, you subtract it from 17 and type it in, so that's kind of the distance away from the head. And on the X tool, it's also the distance away from the head. I tried typing in the thickness and it came out a little bit off and now I know why. That was user error, that was my fault. So here's what I have. I have some pencils in there. Use the close-up camera to get a close-up view and I've aligned that perfectly on top of the pencil and I'm going to engrave it and give it a shot. But I will talk about one of the things that I learned is that it's hard to get it to focus on something as skinny as a pencil. And I'll show you right now. So if I do aimed measure and I click right on the pencil, I'm gonna switch over to the laser in a second and I want you to see where the red dot hits. The red dot missed the pencil. So it came up with a distance of 2.693. That's the distance to the bed, not the distance to the top of the pencil. So I learned that if I just click a little bit low, click down here, right around here instead, and I come over here, watch the red dot, the red dot hit the pencil that time. It might have been a little too low, but 2.42 is what, about what I'm getting. Try it one more time, a little bit higher, like maybe right here. Switch over real quick so you can see. And there it is, that hit the pencil, and now we're getting a thickness of 2.396 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and start this and see how it does with that alignment. I'm going to double check by zooming in and make sure that it's still aligned well. And that still looks good right on, on the center part of that pencil. I just picked some random settings to engrave with. I just picked some random settings to engrave, I'll switch that to engrave. I'll do a power of about 45%, a speed of about 150-ish. Trying to do this with one hand, it's hard, holding the button and scrolling at the same time. And 100 lines per centimeter, which is about 250 lines per inch. So that's pretty high, but it's okay. It's a small engrave. I right, hit start. At this point, there was an error that was my fault. For safety reasons, the Xtool checks to make sure that the base plate is in before it starts. When you take the slats out, it expects not to see the base plate. With the slats out, you have to go into the settings and tell it not to look for the base plate, or it won't allow you to run your job because it sees a base plate there when it's not supposed to. So you can go into the settings and turn that feature off, and then it'll work fine. I didn't know that back then, so I figured out a different way to do it by putting a couple of the slats back in. 
All right, back to the video. I'm gonna try it on the slats this time. I didn't like it on the slats last time because it was difficult to get it to focus on the pencil when it was on the slats, but I think now I have a better idea of how to do that, clicking a little bit low, and we'll see how it goes now. I'll refresh the bed. I'll move the close up view so I can do another one. Let me get this close to where I want it first. Now I'll capture a close view. There it is. And notice how the flat side of the pencil is up now. So position that. I haven't focused it or measured the distance yet, so it's not going to be perfect yet, but get it close. We'll click a little bit low and then come over and make sure it hits the pencil. Maybe hit the side of the pencil, so I'm going to try it one more time, a little bit lower. Alright, that looked perfect. 0.68 distance, realign the text. Sure, it's good. It's a little high. And that looks good right there. We have it set to gray, 45, speed 150, hertz, lines per centimeter. Alright, that's working better this time. There it is, Party 4 Crafts. We hit start. Immediately the button turns blue. Hit that button, see how it goes. cooling down. I totally forgot to put the hose out the window so it might get a little smoky in here. And there it is, perfectly engraved on the top of that pencil. We just guessed the settings and it came out pretty good. So I'm going to pull it off here. I'll clean it up a little bit and then show you how it looks once it's cleaned up. Alright, there it is now cleaned up and it's perfectly centered on that pencil exactly where I put it and not bad. Uh, if I was going to do it again, I, I've learned so much now I could do it very easily and I could make it work on the first try. Alright, I'm going to try this again with what I've learned now and this time I'm going to try to do it on three pencils simultaneously, get the close up view there. Um, everything seems pretty closely aligned. I'm not happy so much with that one. I'll move it up a little bit. About center and center and center. That one's even rotated a little bit because I put the pencil in not straight. I couldn't get the batch processing to work. I tried putting it on one pencil and then clicking. Um, you actually click Smart Fill to do the batch processing. And one time it just came out really bad, and the other times it always says it fails, and you can click for more details. Um, and the details aren't really helpful in explaining what's going wrong. So it looks like it's ready to go. I'll use the same settings. I already measured it. There's what it's going to do. Quick start. The blue button is ready. And go. I don't know why it makes that loud click sound every time I start a job. Maybe it's normal.
until it's completely finished. And there it is, right on the pencil, right on the pencil, and right on the pencil. It's pretty good for doing three at once, a lot better than any of the fisheye cameras could have done. Okay, so that's it for aligning the X-Tool P2 using the close-up camera, trying to get it on a, a thick pencil instead of the toothpick or the rice grain that other people have done. came out pretty good. I had some things to learn. I had to learn that the distance is the distance from the laser, that the red dot doesn't occur perfectly in the center of where you click to do the automatic measuring. So you have to try it a few times and watch the red dot, make sure it hits the object that you're trying to measure. And then I could not get batch processing to work. I'll play with that a little bit more. So overall, a very, very good alignment. I could show you the three pencils that we just did. And there they are. The Party for Crafts logo on there. not bad. So I learned a lot. It'll get easier and easier as I go. it get better and better as I go. This was literally the second time I had ever tried to use the close-up camera. It's probably only the fourth time I've ever used a laser. So to be able to engrave pencils without using a jig on the fourth time you've ever used a laser, that's pretty good in my book. All right, I'll see you next time where I'll see if I can figure out how to do the batch processing and then I'm excited to try to do the contour engrave. So watch for future videos coming up on both of those subjects.